Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel, RPG Retro Reviews. I'm Captain Courageous and I review old school modules and games and talk about how you might integrate them into your current campaign. This week, I'm going to take a look back at the old school module N1 Against the Cult of the Reptile God. Released in 1982 and written by prolific TSR novel author and game designer Douglas Niles, the module's concept originally came from an encounter idea by TSR writer Kevin Hendricks for Len Lafka's module, The Secret of Bone Hill. Unfortunately, Hendricks was a victim of the infamous 1981 TSR purge and as such received no byline for the module. Douglas Niles is probably best known for authoring the 1E supplement, The Dungeoneer's Survival Guide, and the very first Forgotten Realms novel, Dark Walker Over Moonshay. Niles has also been a heavy contributor to the Dragonlance series of novels over the years, so it's not completely surprising that his first module contribution to Dungeons & Dragons was the first to add an event-based adventure to a town setting. For this reason, and many others, Against the Cult of the Reptile God is notable historically. It was the first TSR module to feature event-based town encounters and showed how a town could be more than just a place to buy supplies and pick up rumors for a site-based adventure. However, it is not without its faults. Before I get into that, let me just give you a spoiler warning for those who might want to play the module rather than just run it. Okay, still with me? Let's dive into the meat of the thing. This adventure is for character levels 1 to 3 and as such has inexperienced heroes investigating strange disappearances and shenanigans in the vibrant farming town of Orlane, a community of about 600 residents not far from the city of Hawk Hawk in the world of Greyhawk's fantasy setting. Orlane is notable in that the lands surrounding it appear to be quite fertile and its crop yield is three or four times greater than settlements of similar size. Therefore, if people start leaving the place for no apparent reason, it's sure to bring attention from the outside world. The module begins with heroes in the nearby city of Hawk Hawk, and after gathering a few clues that something is amiss in Orlane, having them decide to investigate. To me, this is the module's biggest weak point, and that's getting the party of adventurers involved in the adventure and on the road to Orlane. Those of you who watch my channel regularly might guess at one of my suggestions, which would be to have a friend or relative approach one of the party members in Hawk Hawk and ask them for their help. And yes, I hate the name of this city. It sounds like I'm ready to spit a loogie. Anyway, silly naming conventions aside, perhaps the friend's relatives is one of those who have fallen victim to the strange goings-on in our lane. The module does provide a short list, a true-false rumors table, so the heroes can discover and uncover some clues about what's happening in our lane. Not much else is provided in the way of motivation for the heroes to go there. A desperate plea from an old girlfriend or boyfriend might go a long way to getting the heroes to make the trek south. In addition, the module also takes time to inform the DM to keep in mind the training rules from the Dungeon Master's Guide and that no suitable training will be available in Orlane, so if the heroes need to level, they will have to make the trek back to Hawk Hawk. The reason for this, I believe, is to provide a tool for the passing of time so several of the event-based encounters can occur, but there might be other ways to address this without making the heroes trek back and forth between the city and the town. Then there's the initial trek from Hawk Hawk to Orlane, which is written as completely uneventful, which brings the heroes to the town directly with the idea that they will start asking questions about the goings-on in town and begin to uncover clues about the things that are happening there. That's all well and good, but it's not a very exciting start to the adventure. Now, one of the rumors on the rumor table mentions some savage crocodiles straying from the swamp. That seems to be a great first encounter for the heroes as they get closer to Orlane. Also, it is a swamp area, so nothing like a few wayward lizard men to spice things up a bit. Either way, in my opinion, it seems reasonable to add some action in the beginning before settling into the more somber investigation phase of the adventure. 
This might also be a good time to introduce an NPC from the village, one not too powerful, who joins in the fight and might be able to tell the heroes about the place, the two inns, the church, important people they might want to talk to, and so on. Perhaps even expressing concern about the disappearances and grateful to the party for coming to their aid. Once more, creating interest in what's transpiring in the once vibrant farming community. Either way, the heroes finally reach the village and find that indeed something odd is afoot in the quaint farming village, but exactly what will take some investigation. This is a great opportunity for role-playing, and the investigations themselves might take up the bulk of a game session or two. Getting players involved in this type of play can sometimes be difficult, which means this module may not be for everyone. But if the players are into it, there's a lot of fun to be had here, as the module gives very detailed descriptions of Orlane's residents, what they know, and how they might help or hinder the efforts of the heroes. Once the Orlane investigations begin, the adventure becomes very sandboxy and that the heroes can go and do as they will, questioning and interacting with the townspeople as they wish. As I said, the module does a great job of describing the various locations and NPCs of the place, though three in-town locations are fleshed out with maps and detail. The Golden Grain Inn, the Inn of the Slumbering Serpent, and the Temple of Merica, Interestingly, the inn in town that is corrupted is opposite of what the players might assume based on the name of the place. Thus, the Golden Grain Inn poses the most danger here in that it is the meeting place of cult members. Each location description tells the DM up front if residents are members of the town's secret cult or not, and this is where things get tricky. The secret of the town is that a spirit naga named Explicitica Defilus has set up its lair in a dungeon in the nearby swamp. From there, she has begun using a permanent charm on Arlene's residents to convert them to worshipping her as a god. It's entirely possible that player heroes could be captured and converted to worshipping the foul beast as well, and here the DM needs to tread carefully to maintain the fun. The entire party could end up captured and converted to the Naga's worship, and that would definitely throw a wrench into a satisfying conclusion to the adventure. Fortunately, the module also provides a solution to this problem by providing two NPCs who are former friends of Orlane's mayor, Zakaria Ormond. The elves Dorian Llewellyn have arrived and are investigating the strange goings-on in the town and can definitely help out the heroes. My suggestion here would be to keep them separate but helpful to the party. This module suggests as much with them remaining in their cottage 80% of the time during the day and scouting and observing at night. In this way, if the entire party ends up being marched as captives to the Naga's lair for conversion, they can arrive duas ex machina and free the heroes before things get too dire. In addition, there is the wizard Rain, an aged, weakened wizard of the 7th level of ability located in Area 27 on the Orlane map, the Grove of Stately Elms. Once again, the module provides some role-playing opportunities with this character, and he can be used to help the heroes if they bite off more than they can chew. But Niles is quick to point out to not let Rain overshadow the heroes. However, Rain will be instrumental in the final confrontation with Explicitica, the Naga, so it's a juggling act here for the DM, as too much use of Duas Ex Machina will diminish the role of the player characters, but Rain and the two elves can be an excellent source for information about the cult, and Rain can provide training for magic-using characters during the course of the adventure. Right in town, there is a chance for exploration and adventure in the Temple of Merica. America is the goddess of farm and home, which makes sense considering that Orlane is a farming community, but its priests have been corrupted and conscripted to the service of the Naga. The temple investigation is a very dangerous one, and it's possible the heroes could come to a swift end in the place. And there is also the discovery of the captive young woman dressed in scant rags, Cyrilli Finla, the daughter of the shopkeeper, who has been kept prisoner in a cage by the high priest Abramo. So, there is an opportunity for the heroes to rescue a maiden in distress. Being an old-school module, Cyrilli is only given commoner stats and has two hit points, though a creative DM might decide 
to flesh her out a bit more. She is a source of information which will allow the heroes to find the Naga's secret lair in the swamp, as Cirilli, along with her entire family, were taken there for the conversion process. Of course, the young woman was not affected, but unfortunately her charms caught the eye of the converted priest Abramo, and he brought her back to the temple for his own reasons. Either way, this is the kind of NPC I tend to put in the back of my head for use later in the campaign. Her path and what she decides to do at the conclusion of the module could lead to other things down the road. It is important that the passage of time is kept track of while investigations are going on as there are several events that take place. Most notably, the kidnapping and conversion of various town folk, perhaps people that on a previous day were friendly to the player characters, but have now turned cold and uncaring about them. But also, inevitably, an attack aimed at the heroes will come. Regardless, at some point, the adventure moves to the dungeons of the Reptile God, either via an overland route as prisoners, as a foray into the dungeons, and depending on how it happens, the adventure can go a lot of different ways. Player choices and the fickleness of the dice have a big role to play here. The overland route to the cult's headquarters is also clearly defined, and a trail that leads through the dim forest and then through the rush moors where attacks by various creatures such as crocodiles or sahagan can occur, with each leg of the journey taking about a day, so four days overall. Certainly the trek through the dim forest will offer some fun opportunities for creepiness, think Mirkwood from Lord of the Rings. Finally, the adventure culminates in a trek through two levels of Explicitica's dungeon lair. There is a host of nasties and difficult opponents for the heroes to trudge their way through that I won't disclose here, but the fight with the Naga will be a difficult one, and Rain, the magic user, might well be needed here. As originally played out, the Naga's charm ability is automatic and affects one PC around unless they take a minus four penalty on all attacks. She has both magic user and clerical spells, as well as a poison bite. The Naga's charm is especially dangerous in that it can only be dispelled with her death, which makes killing the Naga paramount for the most satisfactory conclusion to the adventure. There are no art credits in this module, and with the exception of Tim Truman, no art signatures either. So, tracking down the art credits for this module took a bit of detective work. The front cover and cover page is by the aforementioned Timothy Truman. Interior art is easily recognizable as Jim Holloway's work. And Stephen Sullivan provides the maps, while the back cover art appears to be the work of Harry Quinn. All of these artists provided a significant amount of classic artwork during TSR's early 80s transition period. Acquiring a copy of this classic module is a relatively simple affair. It's available for instant download right now on the DMs Guild for only $4.99. A hard copy can be acquired on eBay for around $30, depending on condition and completeness. In addition, James Friend's Classic Modules Today series has done a 5e conversion for this module, and that is also available on the DMs Guild for $1.50. For me, this is a great adventure story. It contains all the elements needed for the enjoyable play of Dungeons and Dragons. There is the opportunity for some great role playing, memorable NPCs, exploration, opportunities to be heroic, a classic dungeon crawl and a colorful and interesting big boss fight at the end. There is a fully fleshed out town that can become the home base for the heroes who, at the completion of the adventure, may well have saved the town, and heroes might elect to stay and help with the town's recovery after the cult's fall. Orlane could also provide a great starting point to push further into exploring the dangerous or infested dim forest to the north, and for these reasons and many more, makes Against the Cult of the Reptile God an excellent adventure with which to begin a World of Greyhawk campaign. Though, it's a relatively simple affair to locate the module to any fantasy setting if you so choose. Well, that's about all I have for you this week. As you can see, my production schedule is coming back on track, and over the next weeks, I've got some great content in the queue for you, which includes another classic module review, Ghost Tower of Inverness. As of this video, the script for it is already written. After that, I'm also going to explore the world of Middle Earth with Cubicle 7's Adventures in Middle Earth release for 5e D&D. I have to admit, 
I've really fallen in love with this book series, and I want to share my excitement with you, so please check that out. Also, yes, it's going to happen this time. The Masks of Narla Hotep is actually going to get done. Thanks, everyone, for your kind comments, suggestions, and support. I enjoy them immensely and will continue to make content for as long as you're interested. Please share and comment below. And as always, my friends, may your D20 roll true and game on. <laughs>